Probably the one thing I get asked the most for on this channel, besides when are you going to review Malazan, is, yo, let me see your shelf. So I decided not only am I going to give you guys a shelf tour, I'm going to try to be a little more in-depth than, than I was the last time. And actually, it's kind of funny because if you look at that video I made back, I think it was like last November, uh, the shelves have changed quite a bit. I've actually got another whole nother shelf. So that's why I felt like it was a good time to do an update. But I decided I'm going to break this into two videos. One is going to be Stephen King focused since that is the author that I have the most stuff for. And that will be today's video. And then tomorrow, uh, I'll probably go ahead and drop the rest of the shelves because... Um, Besides Stephen King, I don't have any authors that quite come up to this amount of a collection. So that's it, guys. Uh, let's just uh, go ahead and jump on in. So the plan is to start with Cy King here, and I've got so much books going on that I decided to break this video into a couple. And I think that King, since him, not only is he my favorite author, but he's also the one author that I have the most books of, that he has a dedicated shelf, I might as well go ahead and do his video alone. I don't know who to credit for this art. I found it on a Google image search and had Amazon print it for me. So if you're the artist, please let me know and I will definitely credit you. Uh, lots of people have asked me where I bought it. Like I said, I just used Amazon Prince. I love it because it represents uh, several of his stories that I love, including it, Cujo, Christine, Pet Cemetery, Storm of the Century, etc., etc. So let's go on and move to the books. Now, the first question I get asked is, what is your organizational method? Now, on my other shelves, I really just organize by uh, if a series fits on the shelf. There's no alphabet, alphabetizing or anything like that. I just try to keep series together unless they're super long like Wheel of Time and they don't fit. But uh, with, with these, uh, Stephen King, I do organize by the uh, title. The one exception being the, uh, the Bill Hodges books. Um, I wanted to keep those together, and that's why uh, I have them under B, I guess you'd say. That might get kind of confusing to some, but you know what? It's my library. You Do what works for you, I always say. Um, what more can I say about each of these? You guys know I'm doing Into the Multiverse, where I'm going to review each of these, so I'm not going to really get into why I love too many of these stories a lot as much as I'm just going to talk about uh, some of the additions I got and things like that. Uh, 112263 is the book that uh, made me unbreak up with Stephen King and I can't wait to tell that story in depth because it was a dark tower that actually got me to break up with him and I'll get into that soon. Uh, the Bachman books, uh, I do have a library edition which is like a big sin to a lot of people. Uh, for me, it was just it was so hard to track down books like Rage, which are out of print now, especially in hardcover. And uh, you'll find people with the Bachman books in really good condition, and they they know it, and they want a pretty penny for it. So I've never been able to upgrade that, but that's one I wouldn't mind to upgrade eventually, as we're moving along here. Uh, something I'd like to do with my King stuff as well is you'll see that I do have a lot of book club editions from when I was in his book club. And uh, it's frustrating uh, somewhat when they don't line up because if you're OCD like uh, I tend to be, uh, you'd like them to all be. So that's something I would like to upgrade eventually is to uh, to replace some of those books. But, you know, there's so many new books that I like to buy right now that I haven't gotten into the mode of replacing books yet. Um, Carrie, I, I believed that this was a first edition uh, and when I did that Into the Multiverse episode, someone broke the glass for me and made me realize I was incorrect. So I knew it was too good to be true finding that at a garage sale for a dollar. So that's, that's, that's on me. But you know what? It doesn't make it less of a good book. Cujo is one I'm going to be doing in July here uh, for Into the Multiverse. So I'm looking forward to that. Dance Macabre is one I'm actually not going to do Into the Multiverse on. But I'll probably talk about the same episode where I talk about on writing. Because, uh, you know, it's nonfiction stuff. And there's my Christine. You know, you'd be surprised. You'd think an author as popular as King that you would be able to find a lot more collectibles and novelties of his, but they really aren't as much as you think. Uh, that's why I just I, I went with a couple of Funkos, obviously. Good old Pennywise here. I'd like to get the Tim Curry one because I love, unlike most King fans who feel like they got to choose, I love both versions of that character, uh, both the Bill Skarsgård and the Tim Curry one. I felt like the Bill Skarsgård one was probably... A little closer to what he was actually like in the book. A little more vicious, a little more ruthless. But um, 
Tim Curry is just, I mean, he's one of my favorite ever. So I'm obviously going to be partial to him, especially since it, the miniseries, was the gateway for me getting into reading Stephen King. You can watch my constant reader video if you want to know about that. I plan on getting all these Dark Tower uh, comics, The Gunslinger Born, on hardcover, and it just didn't happen that way. I didn't get them when they first came out. And they're kind of pricey now, so uh, I'm just kind of waiting on those. But I do still have this first one, and I wanted to front face something with a Dark Tower, and I just thought it had the most beautiful art. I believe it's uh, Jim Lee. Yeah, Jim Lee does the art in those, and they're just beautiful. Beautiful. Those are really cool comics. I wish they were still going, really. And then my Dark Tower collection begins... Uh, I started getting these Viking ones a couple of years, like about a year ago, I think, when I wanted to kind of upgrade. I still had them the, on the other, the four paperback set that I bought in high school, uh, right when uh, when Wizard of Glass first came out in paperback. Is when I first read, I think it was 1997, 1998, when I first started reading Dark Tower. And I never upgraded them. And then I saw these collections. And I didn't know if they were going to keep making them. So at the time, I only knew about four of them. I don't know if they've continued to do them or not. I think it depended on sales. But I'd love to continue to get all of them to match up, you know, because, I mean, look at Stupid Song of Susanna is the only one that's got the, the keyhole that don't match the same. Ah, it's so frustrating. It, it, I mean, it still has the, uh, you know, the Roman numeral for six and stuff like that, but that's just the little things that bother me. Uh, I wish that, uh, you know, when you it, this fact that they're as close as they are being between two different publishers, Grant and Viking, it's amazing that they're as close as they are, but still... It would be nice to have all seven of them in this Viking collection. So I don't, I haven't actually researched to see if they're going to continue making those or not. And then you got one through the keyhole, which uh, doesn't have any of those things. So there we go. Dead Zone, I did that uh, into the multiverse recently. Very underrated book. Desperation, maybe the fattest, <laughs> the fattest hardcover I've got on the shelf. I'm not sure. I mean, I'm sure that it or the stand is probably longer. It's just, I think it's because of the big bold lettering. It seems like it just sticks out so much more. Going down to row number three here. Uh, in my opinion, his best uh, novella collection that is Different Seasons. Doctor Sleep, uh, the rare occasion where I feel like the movie was better than the book. That's uh, controversial amongst the kingdom, but you know, it is what it is. Dreamcatcher. I remember when Dreamcatcher came out, um, I was just so excited that he lived, you know, because I, it, the information wasn't his hand like it was now, guys. Is when his accident happened in 1999. I read about it on a Stephen King message board. You guys remember message boards? That's when the internet was still just kind of uh, in the in the, in the Stone Age, and the rumor was that he had died. You know, so when Dreamcatcher came out, uh, it could have been about anything, and I would have bought it because I was just I was amazed to be reading something from him. I had accepted that he probably wasn't going to write anymore. So um, that's one I probably like to feel differently about when I reread it because I know it is very much on the bottom of King fans' lists of his books. And I think that at the time, my uh, my view on it might have been just blurred because I was just so excited to be able to to know that I was still going to be getting Stephen King stuff. Doom and Key is seriously one of his own, most underrated stories. Elevation pisses me off because of the size. <laughs> uh, Eyes of the Dragon is one I'm going to be reading with the Talisman this fall for the first time. Never read those. Uh, I talked about it briefly, about how I uh, I was so upset with the ending of Dark Tower, I didn't want to touch any of his fantasy stuff. For a while, but enough time has gone by now that I feel like I can do that. Four Past Midnight is one I think we're going to see uh, get the rest of the series, the rest of the stories in that adapted eventually. Except maybe Library Policeman, because um, uh, just the way that things are right now, I don't think that one would go over too well, at least not faithfully. Uh, Full Dark No Stars has 1922 in it. If you watch the Netflix movie, I think that might be the most faithful Stephen King adaptation I've ever seen. And then Gerald's Game, done brilliantly by Mike Flanagan. I, for years, this was considered the most unfilmable book that he had. And Mike Flanagan is just a wizard. He did it. The Green Mile, a book that is every bit as good as that movie. And, of course, Carrie White. Carrie White eats shit, right? I mean, my Funko Pop doesn't. She just bleeds a lot. And coming on down to shelf number four here. Another Funko Pop of good old Jack Torrance. There was one like this. It was the one where he was in the ice. I like this one way better. Uh, to me, that just says the Kubrick shining. Uh, you know, and I got the little carpet there that came with it. Very cool. Uh, yes, I know he uses a rope, rope mallet in the uh, in, in the book. And you know what? I like I like the axe better. It's okay to like both that book and the movie, guys. It really, really is. Uh, I haven't read If It Bleeds yet. Uh, 
just haven't got around to it. I got so much stuff going on right now. And I know King usually skips the front line, and if it was a novel, it would. But uh, just being another collection, I, I, I did not make it a priority like I usually would. Insomnia is one I'm hoping I like more in a reread. It, my favorite Stephen King book of all time. I've done that review on the channel. I cannot say enough about what that book means to me. Uh, I feel like over time, people only remember one thing about that book, and you know probably what I'm talking about, and that's why I refuse to talk about it in my review, because it's such an amazing book that I hate that people only bring up that one part. They don't bring up the 98% of that book that is brilliant. They only talk about that one thing that bothers them. Uh, and I know that it can't be explained away, and I understand it can kill the book for some people, but to me that book is just the essential coming-of-age story. I haven't read Just After Sunsets. I haven't read Lysi's story. If you watch my video where I talked about Five Kings stories I haven't read yet, I've actually read Outsider since then, but uh, I, that'll explain why. Misery is probably... It, found, it feels weird to say it's one of his most underrated books because, I mean, it's the only movie of his that's won an Academy Award. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's a spectacular story. And I feel like it never gets brought up when you mention... When people rattle off the most five to ten most famous Stephen King books, you never hear about Misery. But it really is that good. Needful Things is very underrated. Night Shift, oh, God, these, live, these, these these book club editions drive me nuts, man. I just, it's a weird thing for me. The Outsider is one of those where I just, I couldn't believe that at his age, I can't believe he's still writing stories that good. It, don't let the HBO series sway you one way or the other, because I feel like it's very faithful up to a point, and then it kind of does like its own thing. And I feel like that's the problem with mo most King adaptations, is screenwriters still feel like they are... Uh, you know, better writers than Stephen King, and I'm sorry, you're not. You're not better writers than Stephen King. The Pet Cemetery one is just so old. That was my very first book club book that I ever got when I joined his book club. So that's why I haven't actually replaced it yet, but I, I'd like to uh, eventually. And then my wife does uh, arts and crafts, and so she made this little quote for me here, which I love. That is such a beautiful quote it's from uh, On Writing, and it's true. It's true. You hear so many people uh, talk about today about how I, I, I like to read books as an escape. I don't need uh, real world uh, happenings to be thrust into my stories. And I feel the same way because when I read, I'm about the escapism. I like to be shoved into that world, that universe. And when I'm in the multiverse, I don't, I don't really usually care. And it sounds weird because King always has always talked about uh, real world politics in his books. So it sounds weird to say that in this but uh yeah I, I love just being thrust in that world whenever i hear something that's like a commentary about what's going on in the world right now it usually takes me out of a book so it's just a personal thing so that's why that that quote means so much to me is because you know it it, it transports you to somewhere else and that's what i that's why i love reading and that's just uh, that's always been a beautiful quote when most people think of much more famous stephen king quotes and that that's the one that really resonated with me so that's why i have it on the shelf and at the very bottom here we go to Revival, a book I haven't read yet, but I'm very excited to. I talked about my dude, Jaime, uh, Jaime Ofego. He's on the um, Horror Show channel, and he just he got me so hyped to read Revival that I've almost just uh, screwed my schedule and just went ahead and read it. Salem's Lot and the Shining, I've already done the, I've already done the Into the Multiverse episodes for those. Skeleton Crew I haven't done yet because I'm not doing short story collections until the end. The Stand I did Into the Multiverse for amazing amazing book if you haven't read it yet you need to drop everything you're doing and uh, cut out a year of your life to read that because it's very very long like i said the talisman i'm excited to read that for the first time this fall thinner might be my second favorite bachman book behind only the long walk which i adored the tommy knockers that review episode is going to be something you guys and finishing with under the dome which i also feel is very very underrated and this just as good illustrated companion that has really cool stuff like notes from him and stuff like that about when he was trying to get published and uh, all kinds of manuscripts and things like that very very cool edition if you can find it I found it by chance in a half price books one day and I absolutely ate it up it's wonderful it's not actually like a biography or something like a on writing is but it has so many good notes that I think any uh, constant reader would absolutely love there's just so much cool stuff in here it's got like the original 
um, newsletters, Castle Rock newsletters that he used to do. It's just stuff for each book, just little facts that you might not know about. It's just a truly, truly wonderful edition that I think every King fan would really, really enjoy. And you know, there's a ton of these kind of books. That's the only one I think I really, truly loved. So guys, that's it for The King. Uh, like I said, always going to be my favorite author. I don't imagine it changing anytime soon. Uh, there's some misses. I don't think he's a perfect author by any retrospect, but he is my favorite author, and I'm never going to shy away from that. So people are like, oh, I just, just can't get into his writing style. I mean, that's that's okay. I mean, I don't think there's anything more subjective than, you know, a book or, or an author or the writing style. To me, King writes the best coming-of-age stories that I've ever read, and those happen to be my favorite type of book. So that's why I have him so well represented in the office, and that's why I wanted to do his video first and talk about just his books because it is the biggest part of my collection. So stay tuned, guys. Uh, later this week, uh, probably tomorrow, I'll be doing the rest of the shelves, which are mostly fantasy stuff and Star Wars stuff. So we'll get into that then. So that's it, guys. That's my little multiverse shelf there, if you will. If you are interested in King content, I've done numerous, numerous videos about Psy King on the channel. I'm actually doing a series right now called Into the Multiverse, where I review each book in publication order under his own name, meaning that the Bachman stuff and the short story collections will come later. So if you'll hit that up, guys, I'll attach the playlist right here for you to read those if you'd like to, uh, or I guess watch those. Read them and then watch them. Uh, but uh, anything you guys want to talk about with King, please drop in the comments. I love to talk about Lord King. So hit me there, guys. I will talk to you soon. Mm -hmm.